morning and welcome to another gathering of the remnant. Over the last few days, my prayers and focus has been on the number of happenings that are becoming mind-blowing events. There's so much that's going on, so much in the political world, so much in the medical field, so much in the way of our relationships. And it just seems like it just keeps coming and it just keeps pouring out and it just keeps hitting us from all angles. There are just so many pressures confronting us that it seems like once you plug one hole in the dam, another hole opens up. And we only got 10 fingers to plug in the holes. And then we've got 15 holes that we have to plug. It's just seems like frustration is overtaking our faith. Seems like lies is superseding our love. And politics is taking over the people. Yet, there is the most important thing about this whole situation. Here it is now, listen. God is still in control. No matter what's going on in your life, rather you're ecstatically happy or depressingly sad, God is still in control. And when we're out of control and don't feel like we have the control that we need to move on in life a little while longer, God is still in control. Remember that. The very next time you feel like you've lost control or that you've lost something that you desperately had or you need something that you just can't seem to find, just remember, God is still in control. This is Communion Sunday. So at this time, I ask you to go gather your bread and drink and we'll take communion after our crumbles for Christ Sunday School. But for now, come. Gather with the remnant. Let us engage our God, nourish our people, restore our faith, and equip ourselves for the work, the will, and the ways of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. I am the pastor the Reverend Dr. Coach J. And I'm blessed to be in service with you on this Communion Sunday. Come on, let us worship together.
Hosanna, hey, we cry Hosanna. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're the Great I Am. You're the Great I Am. You're the Great I Am. Hey everybody, hope we're all doing well today. I've got some announcements again, so let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna have our Travel. Travel will be on at 6.45 p.m. Monday, May 3rd. Uh, please be sure to send all prayer requests uh, in the comment section of the latest Remnant Facebook post. We also have our uh, Remnant Speaks podcast on Tuesday at 6.45 and our Soul Food Bible Study is on Thursday at 6.45. Mother's Day, May 9th, in honor of our mothers, Remnant will publish your message to your mother in the upcoming May 6th newsletter to uh, fellowship at remnantatl.com. Uh, speaking of the newsletter, I need to ask y'all, um, have y'all received the newsletter? Because if you haven't, please reach out to us so we can uh, get you up to date on that. Uh, lastly, our Divot to Pivot golf tournament is coming up Friday, July 9th at Crystal Lake Golf Club. Get your foursome and let's play. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, please be safe out there. Please wear your mask. And with that being said, I hope to see you next week. Here's Miss T with Crumbles for Christ. Hello to our Crumbs for Christ family and friends. These are the announcements um, for the next up and coming month. Uh, for May 2nd, we will be having another virtual service. On May 9th, we will have another kids check and we'll be doing better this time with making sure all the kids check in and everything, everything on time the way it's supposed to be. On May 16th, we will do a meetup at um, the beach. We will keep everything posted for you all um, as far as all details and times and things to meet. On the 6th, I'm uh, sorry, the 23rd, we will have the conversations with Josh. We also will have conversations with Josh this fourth Sunday. So everybody go ahead and tune in. Um, we will have the time posted. You can go ahead and log in about 10, 10.30. And we'll have everything situated for everybody to start their conversations with Josh for this fourth Sunday. Um, one is the fifth Sunday, May 30th. We will be live. Um, so we'll be at an active service for everybody, for the kids to get on and, you know, be a part of what we're doing. Um, and then coming June, I'm sorry, I'm reading my paper. Coming June 5th, we're going to have an out-of-school bash. Um, more details will come about that as follows. Um, 
the more we build up and get things going. But we hope to see you this Monday with conversations for Josh. Reflect on the last two sermons. The hand of God and the eyes of God. This anthropomorphic look at God, quite frankly, could go on endlessly. But for now, I think it's time to bring this series to a pause with this being the last sermon of this three-part package. We may want to come back to this series in the future, but for now, come. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Now I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, but it's still God's Word. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So ends the reading of God's word, but never the power contained therein. With this being the concluding installment of the Images of God series, I would like to entitle this sermon, The Images of God, The Mind of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help us. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. After listening to a couple of highly intelligent people, Figuring out the mind of God seems to be an easy task. All you have to do is read your Bible incessantly, go to Sunday school, be a regular attendee of Bible study, listen to your pastor or priest, or pray without ceasing. And you'll have God all figured out, right? It seems like all you have to do is take a couple of mission trips and you'll know exactly what God is thinking, right? Maybe all you need to do is to lead some individuals to Christ and you'll be able to anticipate God's next move. Or maybe all you need to do is to exegete the scriptures, receive spiritual revelation, and you'll be able to understand the mind of God, right? Well, I have had many conversations with many people who take the position that the holy, inspired, written word of God is infallible, inerrant, and absolute. That the word of God contains all that God is. Their reliance on the word of God is so tightly held that they almost seem to believe that the prevailing thoughts of God cannot supersede the written word of God. They see the holy inspired written word of God as a forever binding contract that God must adhere to, regardless of the biblical research that indicates that there are well over 140 contradictions in the Bible. And if God so chooses to change a law, a covenant, a commandment, or a commitment that somehow or another that would invalidate God and his holy inspired written word and God would have to be called to the carpet to answer to mankind for changing his mind? 
This comes by way of individuals believing that they have the ability to completely understand the mind of God because they've read the holy inspired written word of God. Which, by the way, was written by mere mortal men and women created by God who were inspired by God to write the words of God. With this thought in mind, let's stretch the envelope. Let's stretch the boundaries. Let's stretch our minds of understanding. What happens when the people of God rely more on the printed word of God rather than the living, breathing word of God, which is the spirit of Christ, God's only begotten son. What happens? I've heard some men and women immediately answer that theological statement with, God would never contradict his own word. What's written in the Bible is what it's going to be always because that's what God said and God never changes. In other words, men and women of God who were inspired and blessed to take pen to paper and write down their experiences, visions, and happenings were so precise in their transcribing the words that God had uh, given them, captured the exact rationale, rhythm, and reasoning of the mind of God. Therefore, that's men has written or what men have written, God has to adhere to it. What men and women of God has written, God has to adhere to it. When he inspired the men and women, not only to write his word, but did he tell them to write it inerrantly? And when and if God decides to speak a word that's not a direct quote from the written word, who's going to correct God? The human writers of the word? Who knows the mind of God? that they might hold God accountable to the word inspired by him that's written by man. This kind of reminds me of a situation that occurred with me and my son. And I hope he doesn't mind me telling him this story. But one day, we were all at the kitchen table and we were eating dinner. And my son is left-handed. And everybody else in the family is right-handed. And so, unbeknownst to us, a lot of times, we always set the table going to the right, as opposed to giving him his utensils and glass on the left. So he reached across his plate to pick up the glass, and it was just out of reach. His hand hit his plate, and his, uh, his arm hit the plate, and his hand hit the glass, and the glass spilled over. And the water went all over the table. And it's like I just snapped real quick because, you know, I stop. You know, and I popped his hand. And he drew his hand back. And he kind of looked away because, you know, he was like, oh, man, I didn't did it again. You know, because I didn't get it right. That kind of thing. And as the meal went on. And I'm still a little bit frustrated. I dropped my fork. And just as innocently as he ever could, he looked me straight in the eye and said, now who's going to spank you? Who knows the mind of God? Our text has described the difference between human knowledge and God's knowledge. Human knowledge is limited to what K 
can be observed and figured out by human reason. God's knowledge, including his plan to offer salvation through his only begotten son's crucifixion, must be received and believed spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Without the aid of the Holy Spirit, the living word of God cannot be understood by humankind because of the limitations of the mind of humankind. You see, humankind has a tendency of placing themselves God's power in their life, not human knowledge. Only those with God's spirit can understand the word revealed by God's spirit. Come on, somebody. Think about it. Only those who have the spirit of God can understand the spirit of God. Those with knowledge of God's loan of word, a, a, a The Bible records the voices of many people who have different points of view on the same topic. The writers of the word of God span centuries, occurred in different times and places, under different circumstances, and responded to, uh, to be uh, different because of cultural differences and conditions that impacted each individual group of people differently. It's like I said, Jesus dying on that cross gives us access to the mind of God of which without it we could not will not or never will understand you see the mind of God is too expensive
our biblical inerrants already know, but they won't let go because they think the word of God can be contained in a book. All that God is, the God of the universes, can be contained in a book. Now, we can have the mind of Christ. Yeah? But even that must be aided by the Holy Spirit. That part of God that comes from God through Christ Jesus. The Holy by the prophet Isaiah many centuries before, right? And what Isaiah was trying to get people to understand is that the infinite wisdom of God cannot be known All these things can only be discerned spiritually. However, the true believer of God has the indwelling of the Holy Spirit who gives us access to the mind of God through Christ Jesus. Sad to say though, but carnally minded Christians, backsliders that keep on backsliding, they place themselves in the same camp as the unsaved. You know it. You don't do it. You know better, but you don't do better. Although carnally minded Christians have access to the mind of Christ, they erect barriers between God of all creation who has known the mind of God
lie and still doesn't make any mistakes. The mind of God is so sharp, it can compute the minute, the moment, or the month when you will shut your eyes for the last time. The mind of God can perceive the past, We said we can be wiped away by his eyes. Who has known the mind of God or who has taught him as his counsel? Who has known the mind of God and who shall instruct him? His purposes and plans for us were birthed into reality from the day Adam set foot in the Garden of Eden. So as We find ourselves convulsing from the disturbed. We find ourselves looking for a way out or a way in, only to find door after door to be blocked. We look to the mountaintop, only to find ourselves in the valley. We look for you, O oh God, and oftentimes all we see is the darkness of the night. So on this day, as we search for your mind, as we search for your love, as we search for your son, as we search for your Holy Spirit, we may not know what you're thinking, oh God, but we do know that whatever you're thinking is to our benefit, and we thank you. We may not know If you give us just one more chance, we'll praise your holy name from now until the time we reach our grave. We love you, O oh God. We need you, O oh Jesus. We can't understand without your Holy Spirit, so come now. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name.
and for our sake. Commit your gifts, your time, your talents to help us accomplish our mission and vision, which is to engage, nourish, restore, and equip young adults for Christian service. If you would come, I promise you that your life will never be the same. And that's because that here at Remnant Fellowship, we don't really look to receive only that which comes from God. And that's because we believe in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 that says this. But this I say, whomever gives sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he that giveth bountifully shall reap bountifully. So let every man, woman, boy, or girl and gave it to someone else. And when you give to us, do know, it doesn't stay here. It goes back and out to the people who need it most. Now there's ways that you can give to Remnant Fellowship. You can go to Cash App, enter dollar sign, Remnant Fellowship 17, or you can go to PayPal and enter remnantatl at gmail.com. And then, if all that doesn't float your boat, you can always write that check or money order to Remnant Fellowship, 2045 Mount Zion Road, number sign 400, Morrow, Georgia, 30260. Wait, but before you do that, Let's have our given litany. Repeat after me. Let us give God what is right, not what is left. And he will surely bless that which is left with that which is right. Amen? Amen and amen. Now, by the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, May it rest, rule, and abide in this people, henceforth now and forevermore. Let the people of God say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Go in peace. Sin no more and bless the Lord. I am the Reverend Dr. Coach J, and I am blessed to have been in service with you on this communion Sunday.